Hey guys, Kenny here, and today we're going to be going over hash maps. The way hash maps work is they allow you to store certain variables with a value. So, say for example, you want to make a god mode plugin. And what this plugin does is when you type a command, it enables god mode and that makes it so you're invincible, you don't die by mobs, you don't die by fall damage, none of that. You're invincible. But the thing is, we run into an issue. If we have a single boolean value that will turn on and off when a player types the command, how can we give two players, one with god mode, one without? If one player enables god mode, so the boolean goes to true, then won't both players become in god mode? That doesn't really make sense now, does it? Now, another way to think of this is in the balance example in the economy plugin. All the players aren't going to be having the same balance in their account, right? So, what we would need to do is for every single player that has joined the server, we're going to give them a balance and associate th that player to that balance. And the way we do that is through a hash map. So let's go ahead and create a hash map in our uh, basic hash maps class. Okay, and now that it has been created, let's go ahead and import it. And it does need to be static because we're going to be using it in the main method, which is a static method. The way you define a hash map is you give it one variable, which we're going to be giving a string, and the variable you want to associate the string with. And, the, and in this case, it's going to be a Boolean value. So these two are associated. This is the value, and this string is called the key. That's just the terminology for them. So let's go ahead and give this... Let's give it some values. So map dot put, and we'll go ahead and put Kenny, and we're gonna put true. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and give it another player. So map dot put Joe, comma false. Sweet. So now we have two players in the hash map, one named Kenny and one named Joe. Kenny is associated true, so. Anytime that we get the value Kenny from the hash map, it's going to return true. And anytime we get the value Joe from the hash map, it's going to return false. Now, the way you would get any of these values is you would go map.get, and it's asking you for an object. And in this case, because we're getting the string Kenny, we're going to type in Kenny. And that is going to return a Boolean value. Don't believe me? Check it out. Let's go ahead and make a system out print line. And we're going to print out whatever this map value gets. And then let's go ahead and run this and run. And as you can see, it does in fact return true, which is of course what we expected. And what's really awesome about this is this, you're going to be using hash maps so much when you program. It's amazing. And they're so useful. Like we can go ahead and check to see if a key exists. So for example, if map dot contains key, if it contains key Jack, then we're going to print out the line one. And obviously it doesn't contain Jack. So it would print out one. We can also check to see if a value exists in the map. And in this case, um, it's going to exist no matter what, because there's only two values for a Boolean, but, um, for a map so that might contain an integer or a double or something along those lines, um, it's more than likely that it's, it might not contain it. So map dot contains value. If it contains the value Boolean dot false, then we're going to print out the line two. And we can also even loop through all the values or the keys. So in order to do that, we can do for map dot key set actually for a string s in map.keyset, we can go ahead and print out the line three. And we can also loop through the values. So for a string s in map.values. And as you can see, it's a red line because I forgot it's a Boolean. Change it to B. And we can print out four. And we can even loop through the entry set. So for map.entry, and we'll go ahead and call this kv. We're going to get the map.entry set. And we can get all the entries. And this contains a value and a key. So it's basically looping through this as if it was an array set. An array set. An array list. So it's looping through the hash map as if it was an array list. And it's just basically returning each one of these as a single entry. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and remove me from the hash map. So map dot remove. 
and we're going to type in the object being the string, which is my name, and that will completely remove my entry. In other words, I won't exist in the hash map. So now only Joe is going to exist in the hash map. I am no longer there. My value is no longer there. Uh, my value is no longer there. I'm not in the hash map at all. So I hope if beforehand you had any confusion about hash maps, it's now cl cleared up and you have a much better understanding of what hash maps do and the p great potential uses that they have in your applications that you're going to be programming. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. Um, just send me a, like a paste bin of the code with syntax highlighted Java. It's just so it makes it easier. Other than that, I think that's it for this tutorial, guys. If you have any ideas for tutorials, email me because I'm running low on ideas. Um, I used, usually have a massive list, but um, I'm getting low. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys next time.